Welcome in, friends. This is Voice in the Kingdom on the Box 2 Radio Network, and we are glad that you are here with us on uh, this Tuesday morning, and we have the opportunity Monday through Friday to be here with you, 7 to 9 a.m., and it is uh, another great opportunity to bring the word to you here on Voice in the Kingdom. This morning, special co-host all the way from Marshall, Texas, and that is Elder Jeff Arrington, and we're glad to bring him in this morning. Brother Jeff, how are you? I'm doing wonderful, man. Yeah. My eyes on Jesus, looking under him. That's all we can do, the author man. and the finisher of my faith. He Woo. saw this. He's going to finish it, brother. Amen. True. Yeah, man. That's a good word to start it off this morning, brother. Mm, that's yeah, good. Yeah, we've got to keep the eyes on the Lord, man, and not be distracted Yeah. by other things and people and situations. You know, you just got to stay Christ-centered. That's right. Know, and, uh, that that keeps us, you know, in, in harmony uh, with the Spirit. And that's what we're going to talk about today. You know, mm. staying in unity with the Spirit and how we do that and uh, by first order. So but we're going to look under Jesus, man, and not be distracted. Amen. Unity is is uh, something definitely needed. Uh, we keep talking about needing unity in the world, but, man, the body of Christ needs some unity right now. That's so true, you know, and I want to discuss that and how, how do we get this unity in the Spirit, see? You know, people are always talking about we need to get together, the pastors need to get together. No, 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 by first order. We're going to talk about our first order of unity, what makes us, <clears throat> see, in agreement is Christ. Amen. He's the glue and the bond, and we will talk about that today. I'm just so excited about the Word of God and God's sovereignty and providence, you know, and understanding that God controls it all. Yes. <clears throat> you know, and, uh, one of the scriptures that, I, you know, he gave me years ago was out of Romans nine seventeen, uh, and, and and it reads this: "Is for the scripture says under Pharaoh, <laughs> I love this. He says under Pharaoh, but this purpose, see, <clears throat> he says, I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee. See, God raised up Pharaoh, even though he was a wicked ruler, but God used him. See, yeah, God said I'm gonna raise you up that I might." show forth my power. The good news is that that I made you king in order to use you to show my power, <clears throat> to spread my fame over the whole world. Hmm. So we as saints, we got to see him who's invisible, Moses said, that he's in charge and and that uh, uh, he's, he's running the whole show, even though it may seem uh, different, but God is behind the whole thing. Yes. And uh, uh, we got, as saints, our faith is is... is the eyes of being able to see Jesus. See, we walk by faith, not by sight. And uh, uh, the basis of our unity is Christ Jesus himself. Mm. So we want to talk about that today at uh, Proverbs 29, uh, verse 18. Uh, we, we bow ourselves again today. Uh, he's in the building. He's got something he's dealing with, but he'll be in here with us shortly. Okay. Well, it's all about... Uh, uh, Stand in unity with Christ the Lord, man. And, and, uh, and Proverbs, <clears throat> let's go to Proverbs 29, 18. This is uh, where there's no visions. Hmm. The people, people perish. perish. Hmm. But he that keepeth the law, the word, happy is he. See, where there's no vision. Now, when we can't see, so vision is all about sight and understanding, right? That's right. When you say, when you talk about vision, you're talking about the ability to see or to perceive or to understand, you know. And here, uh, Solomon is saying that where there's no vision, when people cannot see, cannot understand, they perish, see. And this is why God sent his word. It's clear to me that God sent his word because, you know, Psalms 119, 130 says that the entrance of his word brings light hmm. and understanding to the simple. So we return back to the Word, Christ Himself. It brings vision and insight on what's going on in our lives and our purposes. And uh, no longer will we perish, but we will be established in eternal life. See, eternal life. Amen. A lot of people today are perishing. Suicide rate is through the roof. Oh uh, yeah. You see them? You know what I'm saying? People, are no hope. They can't see. They can't see the future. I mean, what's the use, right? Right. 
<laughs> yeah, we we I just mean, reported ago. we just reported a story yesterday uh, out of a school district in Las Vegas that are finally trying to get their kids back to school because the suicide mm-hmm. rate doubled among students in their district, and they're the fifth largest school district in the country. Um, and this was they they had stories in there about twelve year olds and nine year olds um, yeah. kill, killing themselves, and uh, because they didn't yeah. have any hope to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. See that that's what I'm saying. They can't see who they are and why they're here. No vision, see. Right. And uh, no purpose, no understanding of their, their their calling. And what happens is the enemy lies to them and and gives them this hopelessness. And they say, you know, see, they kill themselves. Mm-hmm. See? And uh, the body of Christ, see, if we don't keep our eyes on Jesus by, by first order, see, uh, uh, we're going to miss it as well. Yeah. And uh, we got to return. Now, there has to be a return back to, to the sovereignty of who God is. See? Hmm. And we're going to discuss that today. Because the vision, to be able to see the Lord, is critical to us fulfilling God's will and purpose. Now, we're going to read the whole thing, but in the book of Samuel, if you remember, Chapter three, he talks about the, the priest of Eli. You know anything about the Eli priesthood? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he talked about the priest of Eli. So we had a Levitical priesthood, Eli, Eli's priesthood, and the Melchizedek priesthood. But during the days of Eli, in, in the book of Samuel, if you go there, we, we won't read the whole thing. We'll glean a little bit from the book of uh, Sam, First Samuel, uh, chapter three, verse one. It talks about the child Samuel. It says that. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days, but there was no open vision. Hmm. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in, the, in his place, his eyes became waxed dim, and he could not see. Now this priesthood was a blind priesthood. <laughs> he, could not, he could not see the purpose of God anymore, and it became dim. And uh, we have that priesthood in America right now, see? Yeah. <laughs> Them can't, can't see truth, can't see you know what's real, the reality uh, of what's real and truth, can't see it. Them, verse three says, and the lamp of the Lord went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. Now I'm not going to read the whole thing, but Eli was a priest that did not bring correction to his sons or restrain his sons from doing evil before the Lord, and and the Lord began to to. Uh, uh, prophesied to him that he was going to end his priesthood because of his disobedience. And uh, this is this has to do with the sovereignty of God, because in the midst of God speaking to cutting off Eli's priesthood, he was raising up a Samuel. See? Right. And if you read the, if you read the story, of course, Samuel was a kid, and uh, he wasn't aware of the voice of the Lord yet. And in verse 4, the Lord called unto Samuel, and in verse 6, he called on the Samuel again. <laughs> in verse 8, Eli, at least Eli had enough sense to say, respond to that voice, respond to God, respond to God. In verse 10, it says, And the Lord came and stood and called as other times, Samuel, Samuel. And then Samuel answered, Speak for thy servant here. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel which both the ears of everyone that hear shall tingle. Now, in the midst of this darkness, because we're in gross darkness right now, according to Isaiah 60, verse 1. Right. The darkness will come upon the earth and gross darkness upon the people. The inability to see or to see, to have vision. And that comes from the enemy. The Bible is clear. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we talked about it last week, right? If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them in the lost, whom the God of this world has blinded the minds. See? Has darkened the mind. So we cannot perceive truth or see truth or understand truth, right? Right. So you see that man is making an attempt to change the word, change all types of truth, see? But it doesn't matter. The truth will be here because the truth is a person. It ain't going nowhere. That's right. Right? We can talk about transgender and and LGBT, all this stuff and all this stuff, all we want to. It is written. It is written. Mm. (laughs) The word of the Lord is established forever, man. Yeah. No matter what we try to do to tamper with it and change it. See, we got to realize we we living in a nation not just with Christians but pagans. See, 
And before we became Christians, we were pagans, right? We were unbelievers. Right. So, of course, we would change, try to change the truth into a lie to, to you know, to, to appease our world that we live in, you know, and uh, create God in our own image, so to speak, speak to be comfortable. But the Word of God is truth itself. And uh, you can't add to it and you can't take away from it. Right. So Eli, Eli's priesthood was a, a priesthood that was, was, was blinded. They could not see, not could not perceive. And if you study the story, Quincy, that, that as it went on, the Philistines rose up to fight to fight the Israelites, and the Philistines defeated the Israelites because they were in a backslidden state. They couldn't see. They had no vision. And uh, And when you cannot see, you can't. Unify, you can't come in agreement with truth because you can't see it. So here, in the midst of all of this, God had a Samuel. Right. Hmm. And he was raising up. Now this is so- we're talking about God's sovereignty, right? Yeah. So in the midst of this darkness, God had an answer. And uh, the Bible says he called out to Samuel, and Samuel answered the Lord. And God is still calling today. He's still calling the young people, old people alike. God is still calling. He's wanting us to hear his voice. Hmm. The stranger's voice we will not follow. Sure. See? Yeah. There are many voices out there right now. <laughs> yeah. False prophets, <laughs> false teachers, a lot of false going on. But God's trained Samuel to hear his voice. I shared it with the youth. God is still calling young people to hear his voice. See? God is wanting to raise up a Samuel generation that's able to perceive the Lord, see, able to be a vessel unto unto honor, see, meet for his use. God is wanting to call. He's sending out a call today. He's calling the body of Christ to know his voice. Yes. And a stranger's voice we won't follow, see. Right. And this this calls the, the unity, see, everybody wants to unify, but we, what are we unifying with, right? Right. What are we joining ourselves to? And uh, this is what we want to talk about today. See, God raised up Samuel in the midst of that darkness, and Samuel became a mighty prophet of the Lord, and he brought vision back to the people of Israel, sight, because they were blind. Yeah. And a lot of the body of Christ, see, we're blind right now because we've joined the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. First of all, we've got to understand that this calling, by first order, is to Christ, our calling. The Bible talks about a high calling, talks about a heavenly calling. That first order of that calling is to Christ. Now go to Luke 2, 11, and let's really get into this. Luke, <laughs> Luke 2, 11, if you have your Bibles. Let's go to Luke 2, 11. Let the Word speak. Hmm. Luke 2, 11. Luke 2, 11. Hmm. Now, understanding Christ, it says... For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Now, most of the body of Christ understand Christ as a Savior. They have a Savior mentality, right? Right. The Savior, of course he's a Savior. That's a, that's his ministry. He came to deliver us from the power of darkness, from sin. As, but the person of Christ, who he is, he's the Lord. And if we don't make that shift over into the mentality of his lordship, see, and join him in the lordship of Christ, if, if we stay in that savior mentality, we never surrender our lives to the Lord. Hmm. Now, now, um, in- are you still with us, Jeff? We lost you there. I'm still here. For- yeah, we lost you there for a second. Lost- Go ahead. Anytime you you you're renting a place from from someone, that person becomes your landlord, right? Mm-hmm. What is a landlord? <laughs> the, the ruler of your house. <laughs> <laughs> the owner, right? The ruler. The owner, yeah. That, that, yeah, the owner and the ruler of that domain, right? Yeah. Who's a landlord? Well, we got to understand that Christ is a landlord. He bought us with the price, Quincy. Amen. We're not our, we're not our own. We have to really, really dive into that mentality that I have been bought with the price that my life is not my own. Mm. 
See, when we begin to live in that type of mentality, now God is able to 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 sovereignly place us where He wants us to be. Right. Right. He set each member in the body as it pleases Him. But if we own our lives and not surrender our lives to the King of Kings, to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And then God's will, see, now is forfeited because we pick and choose where we want to be, where we want to go, and we control our own lives. But the word Lord means controller, right? It means mm-hmm. it means ruler, supreme supreme authority. So we have to get back to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That's where the unity is, right? Mm, yes. And and by by first order, see, by first order. And if we go, let's go to Matthew chapter 11. See, that Savior mentality it's like having an insurance policy, you know, we don't want to go to hell, right? So you get saved. But then you retain your, the control of your own life. And the Bible is clear. Discipleship is all about, see, choosing him and not yourself. That's discipleship, hmm. right? One-on-one. So discipleship always brings you into lordship, brings you under the lordship of Jesus Christ, if you will. Yeah. Now, in... In Matthew chapter 11, let me find it. Matthew chapter 11, let's go all the way down to verse 28. You're familiar with scripture, though. But by first order, hmm. we are called to be disciples. By first order. Yeah. Matthew 28, it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor. And a heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Hmm. See, the first calling is not into ministry, right? Our first order of calling is to Christ. It's to come to Him. To Him, and see, that's why I tell everybody, I did, I didn't come into a religion, I came into a, an encounter with the Son of God. Amen. See, I didn't meet a religion, I met Christ. And here Christ is, our first order of our calling is to get to know Him. Yeah. And to put His yoke upon us. But most of the body of Christ, we go right into religion, right? We go into somebody's doctrine or somebody's belief, you see, and we carry that yoke on our neck, and we never get to know the Lord, you see, in the realm that He wants us to know Him. Right. Because now we yoked ourselves to somebody's religion or somebody's doctrine. Right. Right? That's right. But here, this, this is a personal calling. He says, come to me. <laughs> right? And for the last, see, the last year, we've been coming to Jesus, right, on the radio. We're going to come to Jesus. Yes. Not to, to my personal doctrine or my personal beliefs or, or, you know what I mean, and my personal knowledge of God. No, we're coming to the person, Christ himself. In the spirit, see, in the spirit. And this is where we can yoke ourselves properly with the right one, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. The Bible says clearly, be not unequally what? Yoked. Yoked together with unbelievers, see? Right. Unbelievers. Now, we're going to apply that to the kingdom of God, see? Because you, anytime you yoke with yourself with something by first order other than Christ, you see, your foundation is wrong. Mm-hmm. And you can't reach your maximum potential, see, yoked to a, to something other than Christ. And we're talking about God's eternal purpose. God sent his son, right, a savior. He sent a savior. We know the scripture out of John 3.16, famous scripture, John 3.16. Mm-hmm. For God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. Begotten son. Right. right. That whosoever mm-hmm. believes in him shall not perish, but have life. That's Savior. We understand that. But that Savior is also the Lord. Right. The Lord. So we're talking about the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And this is where body of Christ, we have to understand something here. In 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6, 17, it's clear. He that joins himself to the Lord is one spirit. Hmm. That's that unity. And we're talking about unity, yeah. right? Yeah. Unity. There's no way, Quincy, you can have unity with me and I can have unity with you unless by first order we unify with the Lord. Right. Right. You join yourself to the Lord. I join myself to the Lord. 
our unity will be automatic. Mm. Our fellowship will be instant fellowship, like we've had for a year. Why? Because we acknowledge his lordship. That's right. Now, this is where the body of Christ was successful in the early church in the book of Acts. This is one thing they had down. This is one thing the Holy Spirit emphasized, see. His emphasis was the lordship of Jesus Christ. And when he, of course, he died, and when he rose and ascended, see, he ascended up, something else came down, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. He ascended, and then he said, I'm going to send you a I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. I'm going to send you a comforter. The comforter, the yeah. And when, huh? The comforter, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when the comforter shows up, the Holy Spirit shows up, he has something on his mind. We're going to take a look at it after the break. But I'm going to tell you that the unity is found in Christ. Why so much division in the, in the body of Christ? We can't. <laughs> because all of us are yoked to different things, right? Different things, yeah. Yeah. You different know, different justifications, different different interpretations and justifications. Yeah. That, that's the biggest yeah. part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all kinds of, you know, man-made systems, man-made foundation, mm -hmm. man-made government, you see. Yeah. And we and, come with our own order, people out of order. And Lord have mercy. Yeah, it, it, started, it started small, or it felt like, you know, hy hymnals versus, you know, projector screens, and then <laughs> pot, potluck or not, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then it got yeah. bigger. <laughs> oh, Lord well, have mercy. We called for a Samuel generation that had the ability to see Christ now, see. Yeah. We call, we call for a generation that rise up and come out of uh, any type of... Uh, traditions that make the word of God no effect. See, mm. you got to come out some things, come into some things. Now. Yeah, and see, that's why you guys are part of it. Those that are listening, obviously, you want something fresh and new from God. Well, God's calling us out. It's not really new. It's just something we're returning to. That's right. Mm. That's good. See, call call Jesus Christ. He's he, he's always new every morning, mm -hmm. and fresh. He's our fresh daily bread, right? That's right. His mercies are new he every morning. He don't give us that old stuff. He's, <laughs> he's, he's our daily bread. That's right. Mm. Yeah. Fresh out the oven every day <laughs> see, in this dispensation. Mm -hmm. It's called the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus, right? That's right. There was a change of order, and Paul talked about it in First Corinthians, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 3, that, that we no longer are ministers of the latter. Right. That kill it. But we're ministers of the New Testament that brings life, fresh bread, right? Mm -hmm. That brings life. The old is done away with, see. But you notice now, he said, there's a veil that remains, see, on the eyes. Mm. Blindness remains. Yeah. See, as long as we try to do this outside of the Spirit of God. Yeah, that's that and Eli, that, that Eli there. priesthood we're talking about, yeah. There you go. Yeah, that Eli priesthood, they cannot see and it's gone wax dim. The eyes is wax dim because they're taking their eyes off the Almighty God, Jesus Christ. See, we're taking our eyes off Christ, and we promote our, our beliefs and our denominations and our, what our creeds more than mm. Christ. Yeah. See, now things are more important than Him. Right. And then when the basis of our fellowship should be Jesus, right? Wherever we go, wherever we meet brothers and sisters, Amen. the foundation should be Jesus. Hmm. Right. Then, then we're not so worried about being right and being lined up with him is there what we're go. supposed to be worried about. There you go. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about the doctrine. See. Yeah. Hmm. It, it doesn't matter about your law. Who? What law do you serve? Right. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Who, who you confessing? <laughs> mm. And we'll finish this after the break. All right. Well, that's good stuff to get us started. Unity, it's important. And uh, unity, getting our eyes on him and, and, and rallying around that and not all this other stuff. Uh, that's a powerful, powerful thing. Amen. Welcome in, friends. This is Voice in the Kingdom on the Box 2 Radio Network. We're here on a Tuesday, and that means we have Elder Jeff Arrington with us from Marshall, Texas. We've got Whitney Ward back here in the studio, and uh, we're having a uh, good discussion early on here this morning about unity and, and where that is and how it starts. 
And I'm uh, going to keep on diving into it with Brother Jeff this morning. Amen. And uh, I just believe there's a remnant down that's, that's starting to see some things and uh, that met Christ like I did. I know you guys, we met Jesus. We didn't meet a religion, and that mm -hmm. has to be our foundation, see. He yeah. didn't, Christ did not bring a religion. <laughs> hallelujah. A religion to the earth. He did not. He brought a government, hallelujah, and a whole other way of living to mankind. Hmm. And 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 that and he's trying to impart that constitution, that way of life, into his followers, his disciples. Yes. But you got these certain beliefs that stop in the outer court. They believe that salvation, you know, is it, just being saved. What does saved mean? He came to deliver us, but he can't deny who he is. He's the Lord. So, and that Lord, he calls disciples. He said, Peter, follow me. James, follow me. Jeff, follow me. He's still calling disciples. That's lordship. Hmm. See, the 12, that 12 mentality. And uh, the 5,000, of course, he, they follow him for the fish and the loaves, see. Right. They follow him because they saw the miracles. But you don't have to be in the 5,000. You can, by your own decision, say, you know what, I don't want to be a disciple, Lord. I want to learn. I want to understand your kingdom, your ways, see. Hmm. Now, this lordship mentality. And that's what we have to get to, to unify, see, in the purpose of God. That's right. If we're going to come into unity, it's going to have to start with Jesus. That's right. <clears throat> and not trying to match our doctrines. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had a, I had a listener just... Find folk that believe like we do. Yeah. I had a listener just message and said, all religions are looking for the kingdom. But it seems seems like, you know, some, like some of them old songs looking in the wrong places, see? <laughs> putting it on ourselves and putting it on, like you said, doctrines and checklists and uh, pews and hymnals and uh, not on him. Well, the kingdom is found in the person. See, that's it. It's found in the person. If you go back to the scriptures, he clearly said, "If I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is among you." What was he saying? He said, "I'm here. The kingdom is here." That's what he was trying to tell us. Mm. <clears throat> he was saying, "Look, that's the more powerful force here that I'm about to demonstrate to show you that the kingdom of God is among you." Mm. And everywhere he went, he demonstrated that he's Lord, see, and everything is subject to him. We're talking about Christ, the sovereignty of who God is. And uh, this is where we have to return back to that belief in who God is. He's the Lord. Yeah. So we see right here that uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, let's pick up, let's pick up right there. We covered that, that, of course, he's a Savior. He's come to deliver us, but... But he's also the Lord. And the Lordship deals with supreme ruler, supreme authority, owner of the land, right? Right. And we can get back to the mentality that we are bought with the price. Our life is not our own. Now, either that's true or not, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> either you were bought with the price, and you're no longer your life is your own. It belongs to the landlord. Mm. And he can place you wherever he, want, wherever he wants to place you, right? If you can get to that realm of discipleship, of the 12 mentality, see? No longer you begin to govern your own life, hallelujah, you have a governor. Mm. He directs your life as you seek him. As you empty out and say, God, I want your will, he begins to direct your life, see? And, and takes the sovereign providential rule, and they're saying, no, you, you, you're right in the middle of God's will. And you don't know that, how you got there, that, but you're there. That's right. <laughs> and there's freedom in that, and then there's unity in that. There you go. See, now you preach my message. <laughs> you're right here. <laughs> when you get right in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, it says, Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. We're talking about vision. Vision. When, you, when our hearts turn to the Lord, see, We'll be able to see him when our hearts turn. You see, our hearts got to turn to the Lord. And when we turn to the Lord with all our hearts, it's clear. God said, when you seek me with all your heart, you're going to find me. See, nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Verse 17. Now, the Lord is that spirit. Who's that spirit? The Lord is. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And mm. this is what the early church had, and we're going to look at some of that in the book of Acts in a minute. This is what they had. They had a unity and agreement, see, with the Spirit. 
Remember now, Jesus came. He fulfilled his purpose. He said, it's finished. He ascended. Then someone else, he's almost seeing somebody else. Almost seeing a representative. Almost seeing someone just my spirit, someone just like me. Right? Right. And the Holy Spirit comes, and the first thing he he does, he says, I don't testify on myself. It's for Christ. Mm-hmm. In verse 18, he says, but we all with open faith, the whole is in the glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory as even by the Spirit, from glory to glory by the Holy Spirit. Now, this is where vision comes back to the body of Christ. As we behold as in a mirror, the Word of God. When we look in the Word of God, we have the ability now to see Christ. Mm -hmm. See, not our man-made doctrines, right? Our truth and what we like. Right. No, the ability to see Jesus. Mm. See, every time I open that Bible, I, I have the ability, the Holy Spirit has opened my eyes to see Jesus. But they testify Jesus, the Scripture, right? I see the Lord. I see the Lord. Now, if you see the Lord, I see the Lord. Is that not agreement? That's, it should be. Is it, does that not bring us into oneness? Yeah. When you open the Scriptures and see Jesus, I open the Scriptures and see Jesus. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Or you open scriptures and I set up my denomination, and you open, and then you open the scripture and set up your denomination. Now we can't fellowship one another because you, because you don't believe what I believe. Nah. <laughs> and now we got the vision, right? Mm-hmm. But we believe in God. That's right. No, we need to understand everything answers to lordship. Our doctrines, our beliefs, everything answers to His lordship. Amen. This is what the early early church had that was so powerful. See, they were so one with the Holy Spirit, they were so in agreement with the Holy Ghost. Amen. See, mm. And what was the Holy Ghost testifying? Well, in John 15, 26, right? He says, but when the Comforter or the Holy Spirit comes, who I was sent from the Father, even the Spirit of truth that proceeded from the Father, he will testify of me. So the testimony of, of the Holy Spirit is that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's his testimony. Mm. And when we agree with that, <laughs> see, we come in agreement with that, that unleashes the power of God. It comes back to our lives to the church. Because now we're realizing ourselves just of Jesus Christ. Amen. And as mm. we behold him, we're changed. And this is kingdom, right? It's kingdom vision. The kingdom is all about change. And if you behold in Christ, believe me, your life's going to change. Yeah. You're going to be, be transformed by the word. You're going to be able to grow in, in glory from glory to glory, from glory to glory. And uh, this has nothing to do with somebody's church or this has nothing to do with your individual commitment to Christ. You can't blame a church. You can't blame them. It has to be with your commitment to mm. them. See? Now, now you're hitting it there. Once we commit ourselves to the Lord, see, he'll move heaven and earth to cause you to go from glory to glory. Hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. He ain't depending on no man, see, to fulfill his purpose. That's right. He sent the Holy Spirit. He's looking for hearts to turn to him and empty out their lives. But see, we're still in control. See, the word Lord now, we got to go back to the original Greek. It means controller, right? But we're still in control of our lives. This is what frustrates Grace of God or frustrates the Holy Spirit. He can't be where he wants to move you. He can't set you in the place where he wants. Because the time you get upset with somebody, you see something wrong, you're ready to move, you're ready to... See, people controlling their lives mm. instead of seeking God on what to do. They're still being led by their feelings, you know. Mm. How can I going to get his purpose done if we so sensitive to everything? <laughs> Amen. But she said something to me that wrong. She didn't do that right to me. And they all did this. And the pastor did this. this, this, this. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Let's grow up and become sons and daughters of the Most High God. Being able to take some things. Being able to perceive our purpose. Being able to be planted. If God plant, to endure some things. And, and being able to forgive 70 times. Any man, maybe mm-hmm. to overlook some transgression, back up sometimes, and for the sake, mm-hmm. see, because if not, Satan gonna have us jumping all over the place, man, and that's what's happening. Yeah, Whitney, what you got right because there? We can't. Go ahead. Well, you know, Jeff, every man's right in his own eyes. Mm-hmm. 
that, course. That's the that's the battle we fight. Everybody's right in their own eyes. And you was talking about what you were just talking about a while ago and just all the stuff going on. This one said that and that said that and I had this idea. But we wouldn't have all these denominations in the first place if everybody didn't think they were right. And well, that, that's why we go. Who's right? And we can get back to, to who, which is Christ, mm -hmm. empty out of our right, right? Exactly. That's, pull, that's pull our right out and give it to him whose right it is, our life. See, that's what the unity is, uh, Clint. Whitney. That's what the unity is. Because we both agree that, that he's right. He's right. Yeah, the word is right. God is right. He's right. I agree with that. I'm so wrong. And my ideas and all, you can throw it in the trash can. My ministry <laughs> throw it in the trash can. There you go. Not what I want. We got to be I willing, want. though. It's his right. There you go. That's the stopship. See, we empty out our life. That's mm. the key to the kingdom of God advancing in you and through you. See, and, and here's the thing, too. Like, we, we realize and we study it and look at it that Jesus emptied mm. himself out. And he had a go. whole lot to empty out. He was God and <laughs> emptied that out. But yet we're holding on to this measly human stuff. <laughs> Does that not minimize everything that he did and went through to get on the cross and do everything he did for us? There you go. I see, that's my point. Sure. The Holy Spirit cannot agree with us on that type of stuff. He can, He's come to testify Jesus. Mm. He cannot testify on my stuff. See, in my my ministry, my success, and my he come to testify to the Lord Jesus Christ. See, and to establish God's rule in our lives if we let Him. And like He's choosing His life, not ours. And body of Christ, I believe there's a remnant that's listening today. That's emptied out their life. They want Jesus. And you got to understand something, man. There's forces that comes against you. There's things that are set up to stop you, see. And uh, this Eli priesthood, was, he had two sons, and they were called the sons of Belial. That means they were good for nothing. Mm -hmm. Good for nothing. Because they did not have, see, the alignment to the Lord. They was in it for they what they could get out of it, yeah. There you go. They yeah. were in it for the ministry for their own selves. They get the best of the meat, the best of the sacrifice. The, the women come. They took advantage of that. See, we see that in the body of Christ, right? Right. We see men take advantage, see, uh, 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 of uh, the ministry. But, see, there's a remnant that love God more than they love themselves. That's my key. you got to love the Lord more than you love yourself. That's right. Remember what he said? Unless you love me mm. more than these, right? Yeah. <laughs> Unless you love me more than you. Your own soul. He that seeks his own life shall lose it. He that loses for my sake shall find it. That's discipleship. That's lordship. That was going to instantly give us fellowship one with another. Why? Because I join myself to the Lord. You join yourself to the Lord. We become one spirit. And the Lord is that spirit. Is he not? That's right. Now, turn, turn with me, if you will, to the book of Acts, chapter 2. Now, let's look at why the power was there in the early, the early church. It was so powerful. In Acts chapter 2, right quick, we got a break coming up. Oh, no, you're good to the bottom of the hour, brother. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, we've got, we've got a special donor that's making sure there's no extra breaks, man. So you got some extra time. In the book of Acts, we see that now the Holy Spirit, had, Jesus had ascended. He's gone back to sit at the right hand of the Father. He sent another confidence. He sent the Holy Spirit. In verse 36, Acts 2, 36, redeem the time. He says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God have made that same Jesus, listen to this, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. See, Lord and Christ. Now, we got to understand what Lord means, see, we got to go back to this. This Greek word means to control the owner of the land. Remember, the land Lord. He's the owner of the land. Well, the Book of Acts, those that came to Christ, they knew that He was Lord. They acknowledged His lordship. With that acknowledgement, now the Holy Spirit has free reign to show forth His power in the early church. Why? Because they agreed with the lordship of Jesus Christ. 
Now, I'm not going to read it all. Y'all remember the story of Ananias and Sapphira, right? Mm-hmm. Right. I remember that story where they promised some money from the land and they lied about it. And, but they, what they didn't understand, the church was so one with, with God, Peter said, you didn't lie to me. <laughs> you didn't lie to me. You lied to the Holy Ghost. Yep. They misunderstood who was in charge. That's right. But through the years now, of course, we have evolved away, see, from the unity of the Spirit, and we'll get there in a minute. We, 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 we've evolved away from God and from the Holy Spirit. He cannot manifest his power as he did before. Hmm. Because there's so much mixture, right, Yeah. in the church, overtone, mixture. But we can get back to the pure sonship of loving God first. Get back to our first love, right? Amen. What you got there, Whitney? We, you just don't. I, I ponder on those scriptures because, you know, uh, Herod, I think it was, he raised himself up to be God and he fell over and the worms ate him. And, and Ananias and Sapphira, they they uh, lied to the Holy Ghost and they dropped down dead. But, and uh, that just shows you the the grace of God right now because there's people done the same things as those three did and God allows them to live. <laughs> but I tell you what, when as more as the church get back in unity with God, see, the fear of the Lord is going to return in these latter days. As, as, as the remnant that God has chosen realign ourselves with the purpose of God. See, you're going to see these things happen again. Because we're going to be so one with God, see, so one with God. It's going to be dangerous to come into the house of God a hypocrite. Mm, yeah. See, it's going to be dangerous to pretend around sold-out saints. It'd be better not to be around saints unless you sold out like they are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's going to be dangerous to pretend to be a hypocrite because we're coming into agreement. We're coming in alignment with the Holy Spirit. See, now God's able to manifest his power. And you see it in the book of Acts, how Paul you know, was so one with, with God, and, and the early ecclesia, the early church, was so one with the Holy Spirit that he was in charge. He said, separate me, Paul and Silas, right? Who was in charge? The Holy Spirit said, separate me, Paul and Silas. Right? Right. Now, if we, if we go back to Paul's conversion, y'all remember that? Yeah. He was on the road to Damascus, Right. He had all these mixtures and overtone religion. He, what he would hear, we're talking about being yoked to the wrong thing. He was yoked to the Sanhedrin doctrines, and he was yoked to the law and all this stuff. He's on his way to Damascus. Well, the Lord knocked him off his beast, right? <laughs> right, and onto his behind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, knocked him off his beast. And when he looked up, he saw the light. The first thing he said, "Who are you, Lord?" <laughs> he acknowledged the Lord. First thing he did, he said, "Who are you, Lord?" And the scripture says, I'm Jesus. <laughs> he said, I'm Jesus. When Paul had that revelation, when that thing hit his spirit, that light hit his spirit, see, it set his foundation for the rest of his life. And from that foundation on, you see, Paul lived in the spirit of unity with Christ from that day forward. Amen. Because he, he stayed under the lordship of Jesus Christ. His life was no longer his own. He was bought with the price. He understood that. He understood it, that he was a disciple. He understood that he belonged to Jesus. He's Lord of all. Hmm. See? And, and if people could understand that and get back to our foundation, I lay in Zion for a foundation. Who? Jesus Christ. Not my doctrine. Not my religion. Not my I believe. Not what all this means. No, no, a person. Christ. See? And... He's here by representation of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is that Spirit. His Spirit is here. It's in the earth realm. Now, if we as saints could acknowledge him again and stop ignoring him, right? Right. Acknowledge him again before we make governmental decisions and make what we're going to do, where we're going to live, where we're going to church, where we're going to move. If we can bow our heads again, bow our hearts, bow our knees again, <laughs> and acknowledge God and say, God, you rule my life. Where would you like me to be? You want me here? I, I, I'll be here the rest of my life. Where do you want me, Father? Yeah. See, that that's what, see, invokes the power of the Holy Spirit in our life. Hmm. That's the resurrection life because we, see, we reckon ourselves to be crucified with Christ. Our old life is dead. 
See, that's faith, right? Right. So me being in Marshall is a crucified life. See, it's not my life. See, it's the life of the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. The life that I now live. See, that, that scripture is fulfilled. See, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who died for me. See, he loved me and gave his life for me. So now I'm crucified with Christ. It's no longer, no longer I that live, but Christ in me. See, and this is where we can get back over to emptying our lives out. See, stop controlling everything, right? Mm -hmm. and Satan that made this this counterfeit church. Now we got all this technology and and got the playstations and the Xboxes and all this mess, all this stuff. And now people choose where they want to go to church because it's, it's more convenient. Yeah. Yeah, if God, you're supposed to be there. Be there. But well, my God, at least acknowledge the Lord where he's supposed to be. <laughs> right? Right. You think God care about uh, uh, gaming and PlayStation because your children have something to do on Sunday morning? Mm. <laughs> you think he care about donuts and coffee and cookies? And <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to his eternal kingdom and you being in your place, you being set as a member so you can receive the life of God? True. Come on, man. We too shallow. See, Satan has, has created this counterfeit world. Now preachers, are, you know, they catching on. They got the coffee balls, and I'm not hating on that. You might supposed to have it. I don't know. But you see what I'm talking about. Yeah. We got the television set. The call, I mean, the cameras and all that. Now the preacher got 30 minutes. You better hurry up, throw that word out there, <laughs> and it better not be offensive. Mm. <laughs> so that you know that's that's the part more so than the coffee and some of the other stuff is, is the watering down and the and the justification of uh, of that oh, part yeah. of it. Yeah. But see, we got to all make sure we're in the will of God. There's nothing wrong with that as long as you're in the will of God. Right. I don't care. I'm not hating. But if you're choosing it out of convenience and because you like it and you hadn't sought the Lord, see, we must acknowledge the Lord again. If the Lord tell you to be in a mega church, be in a mega church. If the Lord tell you to be there, and, and they got a 30-minute program, they got to hurry up and get the word out because TV show going on, that's fine. That's what you're supposed to do. I'm saying acknowledge the Lord in all your ways, mm. and he will direct your path. But we got to give him his place back. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Go ahead, Whitney. Well, what, what I hear you saying is we need to stop ministering to the flesh and to the soul and start ministering to the spirit. <laughs> yes, yes. Spiritual kingdom. That's it. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, everybody Stop catering wants... to the flesh of men. Stop catering to the dictates of the flesh. Stop trying to, you know, build our church with members based on uh, luring them in with stuff and stuff. No, let the Holy Ghost lead men. They are not led by the Spirit. They are the sons of God. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. Let's give the Holy Spirit back his place. Let's give Christ back his place in the church. Mm -hmm. We usurp too long. Let's get out of the way. Our denominations, our, our, our doctrine, let's get that mess out of the way. Break the mold. <laughs> yeah, let Jesus take the wheel up with the sauce. <laughs> yeah. Break let the him mold. Lead again. I mean, He's a leader and a commander. And, and speaking to what you're saying and not picking on people, but I've been in churches where they literally will go and get their sermons and sermon series and their setups for their stage from another church and bring that into their mm -hmm. church and just do that Yeah. instead of what I mean. searching after. The counterfeit. The counterfeit. Let's see. And, and, and we got to get back to the, to the spirit of truth. See, when he come, the spirit of truth, he will lead you and guide you, see, and teach you, represent me, show you me. This is spirit of truth. This is where the unity is, God. This is where we unify with, with, with the Lord. It's through the spirit, through the spirit, not through the flesh. Right. Not through the flesh. And all these gadgets we see. And like you said, we ain't hating on nobody, but the truth is the truth. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and, and we live in a, a, a society that convenience dictates everything. Y'all know that? Convenience. Yeah. Convenient and mark. Convenient this. A convenient that sometimes you know we're gonna we're gonna have to learn how to suffer some things for the Lord's sake. And then we, I know people that used to, huh? Go ahead. You know, and then you have uh, like, like so. Let's take for instance worship. You know, my old pastor used to say, 
I could worship the Lord. The old McDonald had a farm. I could be dancing around saying, thank you, Lord, for the cow. Thank you, Lord, for the pig. Thank you, Lord, for the chicken. He said, but if, if people don't like the worship, then they're not coming to church. You know, we just, it's just, I, I, I don't know. Well, it goes back to returning to our first love. That's it. See, because when you return to your first love, you, you're going to do what he told you to do. Yeah. I know people that drive miles. You should drive two hours to get here on Sunday morning. You got people that stay two blocks. They won't even show. <laughs> and when I go to Af- Africa, they walk for three days. I hear you. And here we got, got vehicles, AC, heat. They won't even assemble for Christ because you don't see the Lord. We see ourselves. If we can see the Lord in it again, like I said, the vision, remember? And I didn't finish the story, but y'all know Paul, he goes all the way down in Acts 26. He talks about, and I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. What vision? Christ. Right. <laughs> Let's go back to the foundation. What did he see? He saw Jesus. Yeah. The vision. He said, who are you? He said, I'm Jesus. You persecute man, you persecute me. And Paul said, Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the vision. Of the Lord. I see the Lord. And from that day forth, he was able to see the Lord in everything. Amen. Right. In everything. Like like, like I was saying earlier, God raised up Pharaoh to do his will. God raised up this administration to do his will. God's working something, man. Yeah. He's going to show forth his power. You watch what I He raised up everybody. We think God just going to allow things. No, no, no. He's working something. He's working. He he raised Pharaoh up. Said, I raised you up, Pharaoh. That I'm gonna show my power. <laughs> mm. And when I get through with you, there gonna be nothing left. Yeah. No, no. I'm just saying, man. Mm. God is sovereign, right? Yes, He is. He's sovereign, and that's that's lordship. The Lord is sovereign. He knows all. He knows the end from the beginning. He's planned it all. He's always ahead of the enemy. Always ahead of the devil. We as sons and daughters must keep our faith alive that God has already, hallelujah, already seen the end. He knows. And this unity and and this fellowship that we have with the Holy Spirit brings us into fellowship, guys. It brings us into fellowship. But it starts with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, right? Amen. let's, let's, uh, let's Let's read one more. Let's see. Acts ten thirty six. Let's look at Acts ten thirty six. Then we'll go to the break, right? Right. Ten thirty six. And this is a declaration again in the book of Acts. Why they were so powerful? It says that the words which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, for He is Lord of all. Mm. Now this was Peter acknowledging at Cornelius' house when the Holy Ghost fell on the Gentile. Because this blew his mind, you know, because he was, you know, Jew, and the upper room was to the Jews and all that. But now he's in in Cornelius' house, a Gentile, and the same Holy Ghost, huh, fell on them. Mm. <laughs> now Peter said, I perceive that Jesus is Lord of all. <laughs> mm. Glory to his name. Mm-hmm. He's not just Lord over the Jews, but he's Lord over the Gentiles. And if he want to baptize him in the Holy Ghost, that's his right. Come on. And I'm here to tell you he's Lord of all. Sinners, saints, black, white, races, nations, he's Lord of all. That's right. Well, that's what the Holy Spirit is saying. And if I can agree with the Holy Spirit, see, I can come in unity with heaven. I can come because there's power and agreement. If I come in agreement that Jesus Christ is Lord of all, see, because the scripture is clear, Paul said, every knee going to what? Bow, right? Right. Every tongue will confess. Amen. And what are they going to confess? What, what, what are, <laughs> demons and devils and everybody else, what are we going to confess? That he's King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Hmm. And that's the unity of our faith, body of Christ, is acknowledging his lordship, his kingship. And if we can do that, man, can we not flow together with heaven? Yeah. And that 
forget our walls, let them fall. The domination of walls, thinking God, let that fall. Mm -hmm. We serve the Lord. Amen. In his name, to his glory. Amen. All right, we still have Brother Jeff with us. We've been talking about unity in Christ and talking about uh, how we can accomplish that if we get ourselves all, all together on him. Do you have something else to add there before we let Jeff loose again? Well, I was just going to ask Jeff a question. Go ahead. All right. Go ahead. All right, because um, I'm sure some of our listeners are feeling this question too. You know, we we want unity, we desire unity, we preach unity, but it seems like it's so hard to achieve. Um, is there somewhere in the Word or somewhere that you have found that that is a breakthrough in this place? Because I remember the old town I came from, I tried so hard, me and a couple guys, we tried so hard just to get the churches together. And we accomplished it for a brief window, mm -hmm. but then there was, you know, just it, 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 it fell apart. It's no longer happening. And it's just, just getting to come, just to getting to crush those denominational barriers and just come together in Christ seems to be, uh, a full-time job. Well, that's the thing. The unity is based on a person. And, and, and getting together is, is, is a fruit, see. We're trying to get together and create fruit without the root, <laughs> without the tree. <laughs> Christ is the root. He's the tree. He's the vine. I mean, you know, he's the, he, he's the one that puts us together. Paul told us, now let's go to Ephesians 4, and I'll tell you, this is the secret that I've learned. Right here in Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse 1, it tells us the problem. You know, I hear people, people say, all right, the pastor's going to get together. I said, that ain't going to last about, about two weeks. <laughs> it never does because there's no agreement in, in, in just gifts and being pastors. There's no agreement with just being no pastor. There's no, that won't last, you know. You know, men get together because they're pastors. Yeah, apostles get together because they're apostles. Prophets get together because they're prophets. And, and we do all this stuff based upon fruit and, and outer appearance. That's, that has no glue to it. There's mm -hmm. no bond, no glue. But right here in Ephesians 4, Paul says, I therefore, the prison of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. With all lowliness, meekness, long-suffering, Forbearing one another in love. Isn't it? This? this is endeavoring to keep the unity of what? The spirit. It didn't say the pastors did it. Nope. It didn't say the it didn't say the body of Christ by first order. It says endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit. See? The unity of the spirit. Now, what is the unity of the spirit? Or what is he come what is his assignment? To testify of Jesus. Let's make it easy. Let's get, make it simple. He's come to testify. He's come to speak of, not of himself. He's come to guide. He's come to show us truth. He's come to bring back to our remembrance all things that Christ said. That's, and if we can keep that, see, the unity of the Spirit, it becomes the bond, the glue to our peace, to our unity, to our gatherings. Whitney? When men can take, if you can die to yourself and acknowledge the Lord, I die to myself. See, that's the bond. Mm -hmm. We can't unify in our gifts. That's that's not going to last. We're going. We're not going to unify in our doctrine. That's not going to last. We got to unify in the glue, which is Christ. <laughs> He's the bond, right? Yeah. That keeps us together. Keep brothers and sisters fellowshipping. It's automatic. If you yoke yourself to the Lord, like he said, coming to me, yoke yourself to me by first order. If I yoke myself to him, see, we're going to have we're gonna have fellowship. It's going to be instant fellowship. We don't have to work at it. We don't have to, I mean, you know what I mean? It's there when we meet, the fellowship of the Spirit. Go ahead. Go ahead Why? Man. Because we're in agreement with heaven. Yeah. You know what I noticed, Brother Jeff, when we tried to do this? And I, I'm just going to put it out there. All right? This is what I noticed. And I'm one of the most Pentecostal guys you know. I love to dance before the Lord, 
pray in tongues every day, always covenant to prophesy, want to see people. Okay, but what I noticed was when I would get all these different churches together, we would, not just me, um, Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, just just getting them all together, it seems like the spirit-filled crowd was looking for the other guys to raise their hand or have an emotional go to an altar or, or pray in tongues. or They were looking for that and looking for that. And if, if they did that, then woo, glory be to God. But when we went to their church and, 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 and did it their way, where we just sung out of a hymn book and heard a preacher preach and got done, shook hands and hugged necks and went home, all I heard was complaining. Well, that was just so dead. That was just so, there's nothing alive in that one but the ivy on the door. And, you know, all, and I'm just like, come on, God, we want them. We want, we're looking for them to, to, to do it our way. But when we go in their house and do it their way, we want to complain about it. And I noticed that. Well, that's why I said all that stuff is man-made stuff. And we all can get back to there is one body, one spirit. Even as you are called in the one hope of your calling. Mm-hmm. This call by first order, like I said earlier, like the Lord said, is to come learn of me. That's the first order. That's the first call. Not to preach, not to ministry. But he says, come learn of me. Come on. But my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He said, come unto me. But, see, but that's I, my first order. Our first calling is to Christ. And if we can come to Christ, see, he's the bread. Right? That's it. Eat the bread. When we break the bread apart and eat, we become one with him and one with another, mm. spiritually. And, you know, you have communion sometimes by type and shadow. But he's our daily bread. Yeah. That next verse there in Ephesians, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Right. The only priest, that's what I'm trying to get to. The Lord is one faith. is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And where do we get all this other stuff? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not going <laughs> to. Go ahead, Whitney. <laughs> well, to me, to me, it comes down to love. Mm-hmm. Do we love one another? Everybody trying to get everybody to act like them. Let's just act like Christ and love one another. There you go. All right. That's our measuring rod. That's it. If you don't do it my way, okay. That's cool. Most people probably think I'm a, I'm a nut job anyway. I don't really care. <laughs> But I'm not looking at you thinking, well, since you don't do it my way, there's something wrong with you. Well, we just love one another. Let God be glorified in our life. Mm. Well, that's it. And that's what we, we call, sending out that call today. If we all can come back to the Lord, to the Lordship of Christ, and let him be our, our, our bread, right? Hallelujah. Let him be our water. That's let right. Let him be our meat and drink. See, let him be our meat and drink, the basis of our fellowship. And often as we do this, he said, remember me, my body, my blood. If we can do that, we have fellowship one with another. Yes. Fellowship one with another. If we walk in the light as he's in the light, see, we have fellowship one with another. See, and we don't walk in the darkness and man-made foundation, man-made. And see, that mingleness, the Holy Spirit cannot testify of it. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it frustrates him, see, when flesh try to touch the things of the Spirit. Right. And that's religion. Yeah. When flesh tries to touch things of the spirit, then it becomes religious, right? It becomes doctrines and, and, and dead doctrines, I will, because there's our, there are spiritual doctrines of Christ. But then when flesh gets involved, it becomes dead. It just becomes tradition and obligation. It's just like this, you know, just simple thing like, you know, black church, white church. What's that? Right. Blacks go to this church, whites go to that church. Well, in God's eyes, what did he call it? What does he see? The body. There's one what? Body. One body. spirit. Hey, we just had that conversation yesterday with some guy that wrote some book about, I forget the title of it. And the title was Don't Do Anything Stupid. Don't Do Anything Stupid. <laughs> and, and we was talking about all this uh, racism and all this stuff. And I'm just like, you know, I learned something. What I mean, I don't know if I learned it. It was presented to us by you about uh-huh. a year ago. And it, it's true. Why don't we stop saying, uh, man, you, you ought to go and, and witness to that 
black lady down there at the store or that Chinese lady down there at the store or that Mexican lady down there at the store. Why don't we just start saying, y'all go down there and witness that lady down there at the store. She needs Jesus. And, and drop all these, all this stuff. And then if somebody says uh, what she looked like, then it's okay to say uh, that, you know, she got black hair, she got dark skin. Then it's, but we, we just put all these, all these, we sort of just, if we could all just look at it as people. We're just people. We're, we're, we're one body in Christ and take out all the outward appearance and realize we all got red blood. I mean, that's, that, but see, that's where it's got to start. I think that's what he's talking about right here is, you know, we separate. So the world separate. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I mean. And, and if we can get back to the unity of the spirit, mm. we're born of the spirit. We have the same father. Like you read down there, Chris Paul said one father. Now, if God is a father, what does that mean? Mm, he is in charge, and he loves us. Yeah, he has a family. He has children. Yes. See, if we understand that, God is a father. That's who he is. He's a father. Okay, he has children. He has sons and daughters, my first order. Not ministers and, and, and ministries and all that. God is a father. He has a family. When you think of a father, you think of a family, right? Mm-hmm. So are we not part of the family? Yeah. Yes. So if I can change my mentality when I go out and I meet another brother, see, I don't have to say, you know, you're part of what organization. No, no, no. If you're a brother, you're a brother, right? That's it. I can tell you right now, if God was to snatch us out of here right now, he ain't going to say what part of the denomination you were. <laughs> right. He's going he to go, he go about what fruit did you manifest, mm. right, yeah. of my kingdom. He gonna ask you what denomination you were part of, right? And say you the wrong. It was the wrong denomination. You, you think you can't? No, no, no. He don't care about that man made stuff. He's a father. That's in it. Christ Jesus, it's the Lord of all. See, we got to get back to the reality of truth, and, and not be see tossed to and fro by all these means of doctrines. See, and, and right here. Last thing, we'll get to the last thing in a minute. We got another break coming up. No, this you, but, you, not till about five till. Okay, so what I'm closing my point is today. My point is today it has has to do with keeping the unity of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And the unity of the spirit is that Jesus is Lord, but first of all, and then we're born of that spirit. We're either born of that spirit or we're not where we are. So that makes me, by first order, a son of God. You guys are sons of God. Your wives are daughters of God. That makes us family, right? Right. Family. Family. So we have fellowship because we have the same Father. We have the same Lord. We acknowledge that. That's what the Spirit of God has come. God has always wanted a family. It's been in his heart from the beginning. He's always wanted sons and daughters. Did not he say, if it come out from among them, touch not the unclean thing, you shall be my I shall be a, a, a God unto you, a father unto you, and you shall be a, my, my sons, my daughters. You shall be my people. Mm. That's New Testament. He said, come out from among. He wants a family, and he wants children. He wants sons and daughters that acknowledge each other through acknowledging him as a father, through acknowledging him as the Lord Jesus, see, the everlasting father. And, and if we can get this, change our mentality, and get out of this religion and church mentality and understand that we are born of the spirit. spirit. He's the father of spirits, mm. <laughs> right? He's the father of spirits. New Come Testament, on. Old Testament. The same Holy Ghost fell on the Jew, fell on the Gentile. Amen. Right? Same Holy Spirit. Same Holy Spirit. And he's still calling me in right now. Come out from among them, be ye suffered. Touch not the unclean thing. That's right. See? Touch not the unclean thing. And if we as sons of sons and leaders, we got to teach God's people that we mm. must stay aligned to Jesus. We must keep our, our vision. We must see him. We cannot get caught up on doubt. You know, people, I, I'm just saying the truth. Some people love their doctrines and religion more than they love the Lord. Yeah. Or his sons and daughters. Mm hmm. That's true. In the old days, they would kill you, man. <laughs> true. 
that will kill you if you didn't believe certain things. Right? That's not the old days now, how, anymore. How wrong is that spirit? Now, let's go back to the wrong spirit in the dark ages, the crusades, right? Mm -hmm. They would kill you if you didn't believe in God. <laughs> right. Take over lands. And, and what, yeah. You know. What spirit is that under the name of God? That was not, that was not the Father. That was an erring, the demonic spirit. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you, like witnesses, if we can get back to our first love, first of all. You said, my love one another. First of all, get back to our first love. That's... And, and, and through <laughs> through him, we can love one another. Through him. What do you got there, Whitney? I'm just thinking about what you just said. I mean, so I'm going to say, if you don't believe in God... And you're going to hell. I'm just going to send you there real quick. I mean, what kind of an attitude was that? It's ridiculous. <laughs> that, well, that's, that's what I mean. <laughs> that's basically it, right? Hey, listen, you don't it, believe in our God, then you're going to hell, and I'm going to help you get there. Well, and that's what the enemy has used is that history and that that culture and all of that uh, for even people today will look back and throw you in the same sentence as those people right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same spirit that was on the Muslims. It's the same enemy, mm -hmm. same devil. They'll kill you, you know, blow you up, blow up planes. It's the same spirit. You don't believe in what they believe in. It's the same evil spirit. But what about those people that know the Lord, see? Those that have met him on the road to Damascus. Those that met him, you know, in the, in, in the road of life, that know mm -hmm. Jesus. That's what he's calling, those that know him. The real The last thing I want to share is in Romans. Let's go to Romans chapter 14. Well, there was one more verse there in Ephesians that I thought you were going to talk about, that verse 6 where it says, One God and Father of all, who is above all, talking about lordship, and through all, and in you all. All that unity and lordship in one verse. <laughs> that's, that's the key right there. That's where it is, in you all. And yeah. if we can get to that one that's in us all, then we can have fellowship with us all. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I thought you were going to get there, so I just I didn't say nothing. Well, but we, all, <laughs> well, we can all sit down at the same table because yeah. it's the Father's table. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Mm. See, the Father's table. And if we can if we can understand that, that he's the head of the table and he expects his children to behave and love one another, mm. see, now we got unity, right? That's good. <laughs> That's real good. <laughs> yeah, Shoot. he's the head of the table, right? Yeah. And he expects he expect all his sons and daughters to behave themselves, right? Yeah. And love one another. He told us to. That's right. Love one another. Endure one another. Forbear one another. Forgive one another. All this is the basis of keeping the unity. Yes. That's how you keep, you forbear, you love, you forgive, right? Right. That's how you keep the unity of the faith. How does a husband and wife stay in fellowship? You got to forgive. You got to let some things go. Right? Husband and wife relationship, that's covenant relationship. Amen. But the same thing with brothers and sisters. Sometimes you got to let some things go. You gotta, sometimes you have to forgive. <laughs> sometimes you have to confront things. It Amen. goes all the way around, doesn't it? Yes. Mm. Amen. See? But if we're going to stay in fellowship with our wives, you know, sometimes you have to let things go. They have to let some things go. They're going to have to forgive. See? Yeah. see they're going to have to confront some things with you. You have to confront some things with them. It, that's the way of life. But it's all done out of love, right? Right. Right. But that's who God is. You know yeah. what's in us? God is love. See? And if we can keep that at the foot, you know, the foundation, that's the basis of our unity. Mm. Amen. Well, now we got the power to forgive, the power to release, the power to keep moving. See, the power not to to, to see, because we know in the church they said Sunday morning is the most, you know, racism. That <laughs> some, that's what they say. That's because we're seeing through the eyes of the flesh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If we can, if we can go back to the eyes of the spirit. It doesn't matter if it's all whatever. If they're born of the spirit and you're in the spirit, that doesn't matter. Just because a, a, a five white guys show up at an all black church, don't make it, you know, spiritual. Right. Hmm. If that church is in the spirit, I don't care who's there is in the spirit. That's it. So we got to get out of this flesh realm and this flesh thinking. But here we see in Romans chapter 14, and we'll close it with this. Well, verse 17 is pretty good. It says, for none of us live to himself. And no man dieth unto himself. But whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Whether we die, we die unto the Lord. We live, therefore, or whether we die, we are the Lord's. <laughs> Do y'all see that? We are the Lord's, doesn't matter. Mm, 
Mm-hmm. But to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. Then it goes on about not judging and all that. But we see here, it doesn't matter. He's the God, He's the Lord of the living and the dead. And whether I live, I live unto the Lord. Now, if a saint can get that, we must live unto the Lord. Amen. I shared this at a home going one time with a brother years ago, years ago, and uh, his wife wanted me to speak, and I shared this. Whether he lives or whether he dies, he's the Lord. He lives unto the Lord. He died in the Lord. See, because he came here out of obedience to the Lord. Then he died in the Lord. He's the Lord. <laughs> he belongs to the Lord. And I don't know about you, man, that brings such peace that knowing that I belong to the Lord. See, and whether I live or die, I'm in the Lord. And I'm here to tell you, body of Christ, this is the basis of our unity. It's the Lord himself. Amen. He saved us. He saved us by his obedience to the seventh father. Yes, he's a savior. He saved us. But the person of who he is, he's Lord of all. And if all of us will keep acknowledging that, that's the basis of our unity. Because now when we see we don't it, it it burns away all our selfishness and all our modesty when we bow our knee to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. All that stuff is burnt up. Right. And we can love one another, prefer one another, uh, uh in love. See, forgive one another, release one another. Why? Because we love the Lord more. So let's return back to our first love, body of Christ. We see we live in a crazy world. We see our nation is, is split, divided. Let's unify in Jesus. Amen. Let's unify. Hmm. Those that are listening to me, come on, let's unify in the Lord. It's in the spirit. All you have to do is bow your knee. Lord, you're the Lord of all. I acknowledge you. I'm telling you, it makes us instant fellowship. Wherever you go, you meet saints, I'm telling you, you're going to have instant fellowship. There's going to be st- something there that's going to be tangible, and you're going to sense it. It's called the law of life in the spirit. And we met in the Holy Ghost. See what I'm talking about? Right. Now, example. If, if Quincy had to obey God, it wouldn't have to obey God. Would we be on the radio today if you hadn't submitted to the Lord? Nope. Of course, there are circumstances that turn you around, but you stay with it. <clears throat> yeah. Now God is able to fulfill his will through your acknowledging his lordship in your life, his sovereignty in your life. Now, I know you guys have a lot of resistance. Your family, your children, Satan, attack everything. They keep, keep <laughs> <laughs> to keep you from bowing your knee to the Lord. He hates that. See, the most dangerous, Whitney, the most dangerous man in the earth is the man that bows his knees to the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You notice I didn't say gift, apostle, prophet. No, the man that bows his knee to the Lord Jesus. Amen. He become the greatest menace to, the, to, to Satan and, and the principalities in the universe. A man that bows his knee to the Lord. And you know, to be unified, we didn't come together, me, you, and Quincy, and you didn't ask us a thousand questions of what do y'all believe, and we didn't ask you a thousand questions, what do you believe, and we didn't sit down and go, well, I don't believe that, and I don't believe that, and why do you believe that way? We just come together and we said, man, we love Jesus, and let's, (laughs) let's tell the people out there about the kingdom and about Jesus, and and, and it, it is that simple. All right, we mm-hmm. we can get off of all these things that separate us, and we can get unified on the one thing that does bring us together, and that's the fact that we're all born again. If we call ourselves, if you're if you're calling yourself a Christian you're, and you're not born again, then you're just it's like uh, it's like getting baptized. You're not saved. You just got wet. So, <laughs> all right. So we just we just focus on that. That, yeah. that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is God. He's He is everything and if, if we get that focus we'll have unity and we can keep that unity that's it. yeah that's it right, right there that's the basis of our unity now, now if we can get that down when the pastors meet and they got this down by first order they have fellowship but they mean because they're just pastors and leaders and all that, they don't have no substance to it right price yep. is the substance right he is hmm. he is the meat the glue Amen. the super glue whether you the like, super glue gorilla glue super glue whatever that's right he's the bond, <laughs> gorilla right? glue all of it amen yeah, he's the bond that keeps us yoked together man amen and this amen. is what Satan hate he hates 
unity. He hates agreement. He said, "With two or three are gathered in my name, unity, man, agreement." Amen. And then he's prophesied, you know, in the Psalms, how blessed it is for brothers to dwell together, see, hmm. in unity, for their God has commanded the blessing. Amen. 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 Well, we enjoy right. dwelling together with you every Tuesday and and everywhere in between when we get a chance, and uh, we thank you for coming on with us, brother. And uh, we we're going to try to continue to share about keeping this unity in Christ. That's where we got to be. <laughs> Well, God's commanded the blessing on y'all today because we're dwelling together, brother, mm. in unity. Woo, I'll Amen. take it, Lord. I'll Amen. take it. Claim it. All right, brother. We appreciate you, man. We'll look forward to the next time. Amen. God. Well, bless y'all. Have a wonderful day in the Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thanks for listening. This has been Voice in the Kingdom.